Howdy you all, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you for another edition of One on One and today I thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit uh, about uh, the Disney Plus announcements and how it's going to affect your comic collection, my comic collection and, and collecting comics moving forward. Of course I'm probably, I'm probably talking about more, more or less uh, the value of these books and how it's going to affect those moving forward. I thought I'd come on here and do a Saturday night stream. I don't usually do Saturday night streams. Um, but I figured what the heck the announcement was yesterday. So I figured I should come on here and chat with you guys and see what you think about it as well, because I'd love to get your insights and your input on the matter as well. But before we start talking about that, guys, first, I want to congratulate all those people, uh, who won, uh, various prizes at my last draw, the 1000 subscriber draw. Uh, I gave out three awesome comic books and five $100 gift certificates to the Comic Doctor Pressing and Cleaning Service. So again, congratulations to everybody who has won. And if you did win and have not contacted me yet, please do so, so we can arrange getting those gifts to you. Now, I also said I was going to announce another gift when I hit another milestone. I figured the next milestone will be 1,500 subscribers. And what I'm going to do, at this point, I, got, I have one thing I've come up with. So I'm going to give out a $250 um, gift certificate towards CGC grading. That's Canadian, by the way, guys. So if you look at my Canadian prices, I know I have a lot of American uh, followers, but please have a look. You could say it's about 200 US, give or take. Okay, so anyways, $250 towards CGC grading. That will cover approximately 10 modern uh, comic books being graded. Okay, uh, anyways, that's the first gift. I might come up with something else as well. If I, if I come up with a nice comic book, or if I see a nice comic book I want to give away, I'll, I'll throw something else in the mix as well. Uh, so there you go. That's the next prize. Hi, everybody who's showing up right now. Also, uh, in the upcoming week, you might want to consider popping by or hitting that notification bell because I've got a pretty busy week ahead of me, not only pressing books, but also up here on YouTube because another CGC, as two CGC boxes have arrived. One came yesterday and on Thursday. I didn't even know another one was coming. So I have two CGC boxes to open and share with you. Also, of course, another episode of What's in the Press. And don't get mad at me, guys, but I did it again. I think I might be addicted. I bought another small collection. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have, but I did. I don't know. Anyways, I bought a, I bought a three short box collection, and I'll share those with you because a lot of fun books in there. Uh, two, two boxes in particular have a lot of nice uh, silver and bronze age goodness in there. So I will share that with you at some point this week and be, i bought the collection for for two or three books that's that's anyways and i probably paid too much but whatever i i did it anyhow so that's coming up this week as well but you know what so again today let's talk a bit about this disney plus news we got i don't know if you were privy to this or not but yesterday it was disney plus day and there's a lot of announcements in the marvel universe um there were a lot of announcements, and take a look at this this banner here. We've got quite a few uh, pretty amazing shows, and I'll go through them really quickly. For what I know about them, I don't know everything about it, guys, but I do know a little bit about these. Uh, the first one, X Men '97. Now, this is pretty cool. This is the first real uh, MCU project that is that is taking place. I mean, even though it's it's an animated show, but it's still the first. X-Men project under the Disney banner. And you'll notice it's called X-Men 97. And the reason it's called X-Men 97 is it's actually taking place. It's a, it's a direct continuation from the famous 1990s X-Men cartoon that I think ended in 97, if I'm not, if I'm not incorrect. Um, so the cartoon will continue from where it left off. Now, this to me is obviously a way to get people... Uh, in the mood for X-Men, right? To get us ready for the emergence of the X-Men in the MCU. That's what I think is happening here. Next, we have Agatha and the House of Harkness. Well, this... Uh, I won't talk about how I personally feel about these shows. I'll just tell you what I think I know about them. This is a, this is kind of like a second, a second part to 
WandaVision. We continue with the Agatha Harkness character. And again, guys, you'll notice um, there's lots of talk about, you know, Moon Knight. Obviously, we'll talk about that in a second. But there's also talk, there's talks of Werewolf by Night. There's talks of Mor- uh, of Morbius over in the Sony area. Uh, there's, uh, there's talks of... Um, uh, what was the other one? There's another, another uh, oh, the Black Knight as well, too. So a lot of mythical uh, horror type uh, uh, figures that are going to be emerging in the MCU in the coming years. And Agatha and the House of Harkness might be another way of introducing the witches and, you know, witchcraft to that to that mix, okay? Miss Marvel obviously is the, um, is the, uh, is just that it's Miss Marvel. It's the young Camilla Khan character. It's a series that focuses on her, and that character will eventually appear in the Marvels movie, which will also have uh, uh, the uh, the Captain Marvel as well as the Captain Marvel from WandaVision, uh, Monica Rambo, the three Marvel ladies. So they're going to be in that together, and then we have I Am Groot, another animated series. We then have Ironheart, which I believe is a live action series. Riri Williams. I heard Riri Williams is going to be in um, uh, uh, the Black Next Black Panther installment. So that could be, um, you know, getting us ready for that series. Secret Invasion going along the bottom there. Secret Invasion is going to obviously be a live action show. They didn't give us much information on that today All they, or yesterday, sorry. All they did was really just show us uh, a shot of Sam Jackson with the scars on his face and, uh, you know, a blue eye there. Anyways, what if season two is obviously a continuation of the animated series? Uh, Moon Knight looks pretty, looks pretty cool. Actually, again, I'm not not a huge Oscar Isaacs fan. I know I'm in the minority there, but I got to admit a lot of what I saw there looked fantastic. Um, Marvel zombies, I believe is a continuation from the what if episodes Uh, With the Marvel Zombies, I heard it might be more accurate to the Marvel Zombies comic book series. A lot of people are hoping that's the case, but they might go down that route. She-Hulk, they showed us a really quick clip of that. They're they're calling She-Hulk a comedy. Um, uh, Spider-Man Freshman Year is animation, an animated series in the art vein of Steve Ditko, I believe. Talking about the early days of Spider-Man and Echo, I don't know much about this character. I don't know if Echo is going to be live action. I think it is. And it deals with a character who I believe is, um, uh, I'm not sure, is... I'm not sure if she, if she if a female character or not. You can correct me in the, um, in the chat. We'll go to the chat in a second to see what you think. Um, but she's either... Uh, I think she's deaf. I think. I think. I'm not 100% sure. I never read Echo. I'm not sure. Anyways, guys, that's the that's the lineup from MCU that's coming up for Disney Plus. Now these are not MCU films. These are for Disney Plus exclusively. These are going to these are going to show up only on the MCU, uh, the Disney Plus Plus network. Now, how about you guys? Before we get into the comics and how it's going to affect our comic books. What did you guys, are you, did you guys have a chance to look at those? If this is the first time you're looking at these, these titles, what do you think? Are you excited about any of those? Do you know, do you have any insider information you want to share? Let's go over to the uh, chat and have a look and see uh, what you guys think. Let's get my chat window up here. There it is. Beautiful. Hey, there's James all the way from New Mexico. How you doing, James? Rock City Comics. Hey, I could use 10 books graded. Couldn't we all? Well, hey, you know what? It's a great... The, that 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 prize is not to grade the books, it's to get them graded. But I mean, I guess you could use the money towards grade, uh, grading if you wish. It makes no difference to me. Pappy, what month of submissions are you pressing now, Kevin? Currently, I'm in. I'm moving towards late June, getting into the late June area now. Liam, one. I'm pretty excited about Moon Knight TV. I've been really enjoying the current run. Um, I must admit, I do not read modern comics. I just don't have time. I, I you know, I'm again, I'm most, mostly a vintage kind of guy, but I'm a big Moon Knight fan. Uh, I mentioned before in the state, I have two copies of, of Werewolf by Night 32 somewhere, somewhere. I don't know where, but I know I know they're out there. I have them. Uh, I'm really excited to get those clean and press. They did not, Rob asked, did they announce Daredevil? They did not announce anything with Daredevil. And Alan Thornton says she will be in Hawkeye. Are you, you were talking about Echo, right? I think I heard about Echo being in Hawkeye as well. That's pretty cool. Excuse me, guys, while I drink my... 
my 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 Coke Zero from McDonald's. Um, what do you think of those series? Does anything there excite you guys in the chat room? What do you guys think? I'm ready for Hawkeye. I, I love that it's actually a Christmas kind of a Christmas theme show. I kind of like that. It's kind of fun, right? Definitely. Okay, thanks, Alan, for clearing that up. Appreciate it. Um, you know, a lot of people were talking last week when we were, we were doing our live chats. A lot of people were asking about She-Hulk, and they were saying that She-Hulk was going to be... Um, the She-Hulk comics have gone down in value. Oh, uh, Rock City. I, I've only had a few books graded with terrible results. Well, Rock City, that's not good. So maybe you want to find a new presser. Maybe you want to find a new presser. <laughs> Davey Clare, I, I had a, I had an actual, I had, a, I had a BLT quarter pounder for a change today. I usually get a Big Mac, but I, I'm trying to be healthy. So I went with a quarter pounder with, you know, a BLT. Healthy, eh? Yeah, give me a break. Um, let's get over to, let's, let me, let me transfer over to, I'll come back to the chat in a little bit, guys. You guys can populate that with your responses. Let's go over to, I have, let's see here. Where is it? No, that's not it. Well, that is, no, that's not it right here. No, that's not it. Sorry. There it is. Okay. Let's head over to key collector for a second. Cause I have it, uh, I have it somewhere. There it is. Okay, so I have Key Collector clawed up here, and I looked at Miss um, Marvel first. Look, at, let's look up She Hulk really quick. Actually, yeah, let's see which let's see which She Hulk books are kind of on the move. And usually people are, are tending to see. Oh come on, did I spell it wrong? Did it log me out? What's going on here? I like key collector usually works pretty good. There we go. So we've got lots of She-Hulk uh, series to look at here, guys. The one, the one that tends to be the most obviously popular is the very first appearance. Um, now I don't understand this high value. This has got to be raw, right? This is these are raw values, I would think. Um, but that is a pretty big book I've been seeing on the rise, obviously. And then I've also been seeing this other series here. I think it's the John Byrne version of She-Hulk right here has started to heat up as well too. And apparently the, the series is going to focus more on the John Byrne series. They are calling it a comedy, an actual comedy. So it's going to be kind of uh, like, um, how can I, how can I? Kind of a meta version of of a of a of a, of a, she, of a series, very different than what we've gotten so far. So very curious to see. And if you watch the preview earlier today, she even she even had some fun and said the lines that Bill Bixby's Hulk said, "Don't make me angry. You you won't like me when I'm angry." She actually used those lines in the series. I want to go over to eBay actually. Let's go over to eBay really quick and see what She Hulk's going for right now. Because a lot of people were saying last week that. It had it, it had bought has been going down quite a bit in value, but let's let's have a look. Let's go to She Hulk number one. Remember, guys, when you go to She to look for the value of books, you always want to go to the advanced tabs and hit sold listings. You want to see them in green so you know exactly what they've been selling for, right? So let's see what we got here. So you get nine point six sensational She Hulk for one eighteen, a raw copy of She Hulk for one fifty. Let's see. Anything else that pops out? Oh, Professor Hulk's first appearance here. I've seen that in the shop a couple of times. I'm not seeing any nine eights here. Let's let's type in CGC and see if that makes a difference. So last one of the last ones sold here was a white pager. Uh, best offer so twelve fifty asking and here's another one for seventeen. This one actually sold for seventeen four nine nine US, right here. Uh, another one for so twelve hundred seems to be about the going price right now on eBay for a She Hulk number one. Um, I would like to see. I want to see more. I want to see more more copies. Let's see here. I really got to invest. I tried to get Go Collect going and it wasn't working. I really want to get back into GP, I think, because I because I'm I'm not really liking the Go Collect very much lately. So it is you're looking at twelve hundred dollars for uh 
A She-Hulk number one. Let's see how much a Sensational is going for right now. So about 350 US. Here's over 273 US. 330 US. The risk cover covers a popular. I think I've got tons of these in storage somewhere. Oh my gosh, $810. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So some of the John Byrne copies are really, you know, it seems, guys, as per usual with these modern books, they have to be graded. If they're not graded, you're not going to be getting the money you want for those. So anyways, She-Hulk. I think there was a time there when She-Hulk was, um, where's my chat window again? There was a time there, I think, when the when the She-Hulks were actually going for closer to 15, 16, 1700, if I recall correctly, which is crazy to me, but that's apparently what was going on. Let's see what's going on here. Um, Rock City says, LOL, I have only had a few books graded with terrible results. That's too bad. Oh, I already read that one. Sorry. The Viking. Movies that, that mayor versus with the Viking. Hey, man, just want to say thanks. I won the Eternals one uh, show on Rob Show. Hey, Movies that mayor. I, I sent the book out to you um, on Thursday. I dropped it off at the post office. And if you would like to see the actual shipping label, I sent it to Rob. But if you want a copy just for your own records, email me at info at the comic doctor.com or contact me on Facebook and I'll send you a copy. You can have it for your records. You should have the Eternals book within about, they said two weeks. I think it'll be about that. Uh, anyways, congratulations. I'm glad you won that book. Anyway, the first time I'm mailing a book off to Ireland, but congratulations. Um, Alan Thornton, I'm looking forward to Moon Knight and Agatha bring on the magic. Yes. And you know what? It could be a whole new realm of the Marvel universe is going in, you know, maybe we are not going to see, you know, Captain America and Iron Man anymore. Maybe we're going to phase them out. And this new, you know, fourth wave is going to be something completely different. I, I don't know. I I'm really not sure, you know, Hey, art chemist, how you doing? Rock City. Oh, it's had to do with the grading company, not the presser. Presser sent me high res. Oh, okay. So that's CBCS or CGC, Rock City. Eric, oh, hello, Kevin. Just shipped some books off today to you to hopefully get there before you press my cantos. Eric, perfect. Well, the cantos are actually right. They're like, they're probably Monday, but don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll put them aside uh, until I get those back and I'll, I'll do them all together. Thank you very much, Eric. Alan Thorne, I like using GPA for slab prices. So do I. I always, I've always been a big GPA guy, and then I got into Go Collect because it was easier to kind of keep my own collection, you know, in tune. But the, uh, I don't like the new Go Collect. It's too, too much. It's just too busy. Too much going on. So I'm gonna probably go back to GPA. I use Cover Price. Maybe I should check those guys out too, Wayne. Wayne says I use Cover Price. Uh, Rob collects is. Go collect pricing bad. I always found Go collect pricing not as accurate as GP. GP always was a little more accurate in my opinion. So um, it's always good to have a few tools at your disposal, you know, a few sites at your disposal, but it does add up. You have to pay for these, right? But GP is probably the most accurate and most pros use GP. Mr. Mayor says, thanks, much appreciated. New subscriber to and digging deeps through your videos. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I certainly do appreciate it. And again, congratulations on that Eternals number one. I, I And just to give you guys a little, a little, 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 those who today will, you're watching this today, will get a little hint. I might be giving out a couple of more nice books over at Rob's channel. I'm looking at uh, possibly a... Um, uh, to kind of to kind of celebrate the Hawkeye series, I might be making a quick appearance on Rob's show and giving out another comic there. And also, when Boba, when the book of Boba Fett uh, drops, I'll probably drop by and give it another book as well too. If Rob will have me, I think he likes it, so I think we will do that again. It is a lot of fun, uh, and Rob's Rob's a great guy. Rob, Rob Robert Meyer Burnett is probably like. Like I love movies, guys, and and I often kind of tell my you know I, I I'm pretty knowledgeable i think about film what have but I, I know absolutely nothing in comparison to what robert meyer burnett knows a guy's a a walking uh hollywood and film encyclopedia so if you love hollywood and film and all that you want to go and check him out and if you like actually if you like 
<clears throat> going off topic here, but if you like old Hollywood, like um, the 1930s, 1940s, 50s, 60s Hollywood, you got to check out a podcast called You Must Remember This. And the lady's name is escaping me right now, but she tells really well-researched stories, actual true-to-life stories of what was happening in Hollywood during different times in history. What the heck's her name? Oh, her name's escaped, but she's married to Ryan Johnson, the the director of um, uh, The Last Jedi or Rise of Scott. No, Rise of Scott. No, Last Jedi. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that film. Um... But anyways, she's married to that dude, and um, her 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 channel's fantastic. It's very well researched, and it's great to listen to it. You can listen on your pod on your uh, you know on, on um, Spotify or whatever. But check it out; it's really good. Um, Turn my swamp. Oh, Rock City says it was CGC. Turn my swamp thing thirty seven. First appearance of Constantine from a ninth. Oh man. And Rock City, can I ask you? Was it that fast service or was it a regular service? That's a curious. That's a question I have for you. I just with GPA had images like Go Collect Alan. That is kind of my take on it. That is kind of why I um I kind of gave up on it. I, I like I like to have the image for my reference, so I kind of like that. And sometimes you're not sure if you got the right book or not, because sometimes the titles are very similar. So having an image of the book is 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 is, is great. And Go Collect does that, and that's something the GP does not do. And I agree with you. Oh, and congrats on the one kill. Thanks very much, Alan. I appreciate that. Rock City says it was fast track. Yeah. Mm. Complain. Call and complain, man. That's all I can tell you. Hopefully you did and hopefully they'll take care of you. Hopefully they will take care of you. Let's take a look at um, at Camilla Khan's first appearance and see what they're going for now. Um, oops. Oh, oh, I screwed something up there, guys. Sorry. Let me go back to... Oh, no, I'm still here. Okay, one sec, guys. Right there. Okay. The right... Just trying to find my... Uh, eBay. Right there. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Let's find out and see... Let's look about Camilla Khan. Camilla... Whoops. If I'm spelling it right, it'll, it'll correct it for me. No, oh, not even close. There we go. This is the one right here. This is the actual first appearance of Camilla Khan. All new Marvel now point one. Let's do this here. Whoops. Oh, come on. Wow. Some of these are going for big money. Look at this. Let's see what the solds are going for. Sorry, guys. All new Marvel. Because I got to spell it all out for all new Marvel. Point one, CGC 9.8. Go to sold. Oh, there we are. We are in sold. Whoops. Sorry. Right, go back. We are in sold. All right. So check it out. So, wow. Yeah. Going for big dough, guys. Uh, 16, almost 1,700 US, about 2,100 Canadian approximately for Kamala Khan's first appearance. Look at that. 1700 us now again if i had my go collect up and running which i don't i couldn't log in for some reason i can log in on my cell phone but i can't seem to log in on um i can't seem to log in on my on my computer i like to see what they were going for but look at that you know it's inching up quite a bit these these comics i don't think over the next few few years are not going to be um but look at it, it drops off, look, look at that, 7.5 drops off to like, uh, like 200, under 200 dollars US. So of course we're talking the high grade. You gotta be, you gotta be sitting on a 9.8, 9, eight, nine all, as always, 9.6 even, let's see what they go for, probably like around, wow, drops, well no, was this November? Not October 17th, November 2nd, yeah, big drop, big drop from, from almost $2,000 to $600 drop for a Kamala Khan first appearance. All those Miss Marvel books that are related to you know her cameo appearances, they're all big books and they're all um, they're all uh, very popular right now. Let's see if I can uh, find it here. Uh, am I spelling it wrong? Probably am. K 
characters. I always go by characters. Search characters. Let's see. There she is. Okay, let's have a look. See, so these are the ones you want to look for, guys. These are the these are the ones I see here all the time. Captain Marvel 14, Captain Marvel uh, 17 in second print, more so than this one. Obviously, it's a little more uh, sought after. Uh, and then, of course, point you know the point one is another one as well too. Um, these are raw prices, obviously, but this I don't understand this 2K for a raw. Like this is wrong. This is obviously wrong here. We just saw them selling for 16, 1700 US. So Kamala Khan, another one you want to look for um, and pick up, you know, in high grades. Uh, now, Moon Knight is another one that was announced and we'll we'll come back to the, maybe Kamala later. But that's one that I'm pretty excited about. The character. Characters. Thank you. Moon Knight. Now, with Moon Knight. Um, obviously the big one is right here, Werewolf by Night 32, but also a lot of Bill Sink Sinkevich's, um, actually even, even this one right here, the, the Marvel Spotlight number 28 in a 9.8 has been going for, I think a couple of grand. So even these first two solo stories have been, um, are pretty huge. And like I said, you want to jump into, excuse me, the, the series here, the big Bill Sinkevich series. Some of those classic covers are really starting to pump up. Let's see if any, yeah, like right here, Moon Knight number eight uh, is a big one. Also, Moon Knight number 14 is huge. Moon Knight 15 is huge right here. These are the ones I see at the office a lot. Like right here, Moon Knight eight, Moon Knight number 14, Moon Knight number 15, Moon Knight, uh, where is it? Right here, 25 was a huge one. And of course, 29 is another big one. So those Bill Sienkiewicz books are are huge. And I think just the art alone is going to make them very sought after. People always talk about those books as being, you know, some of the, their favorite covers of all time. Those Moon Knight covers, those Bill Sienkiewicz Moon Knight covers are classic covers now. And people want them. So... You want to keep your eye, and you can still get them for a good price. They're starting to heat up, though. I've been seeing them starting to heat up quite a bit. Um, Rock, Roxy's talking about his books that were kind of uh, messed up by CGC's fast track service. And hold on, buddy, let me just check something here. I want to make sure my stream's okay. Yes, it is. He says. He says, let's see, Rock City already called, complained multiple times, but basically told pound salt. That sucks. The Greater literally wrote a question mark on the cover? Oh, come on. What do you mean he wrote a question? You saw an imprint or you saw an actual ink and pencil? That seems a little crazy, Rock City. Uh, Wayne, you can tell the staying power of a good book by the value of nine eights. Uh, less than nine eights. If it's only valuable at nine eight, it's for the spec and not really the content, or are therefore no longevity. That's a good point, Wayne. Yeah, you know what? I've heard that before too, and that is pretty. Um, that's a pretty good point. So what's what Wayne is trying to say is, if you've got a, a book like say that Marvel point, the first Kamala Khan, and in a nine eight it's two thousand dollars, but then at nine six it drops to six hundred. Does it have staying power? Does is it going to maintain? I mean, don't get me wrong. Every book drops from 9.8 to 9.6, right? And then from 9.6 to 9.4 and all the way down the, down the ladder. But how drastic of a change is it, right? When I can go up and buy an 8.5 of the first Kamala Khan for $200, does that really say much about the character? Because you know what? 200 bucks is still not that much, right? For a, for a, for a first appearance. Um, you know, it's not, a bad, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. And again, if, having GP analysis is a good tool to have to make sure that you're on the right track. Like I'm going through eBay really quickly here, but you're only seeing a month, month and a half. If you go to GP uh, GP analysis, you actually, it goes back years. It goes back years and years. And you can you can see the, the progression of a book and where it went up, when it went down, if it went back up again, the spikes and the valleys, all that sort of thing. So yeah, GP is great. And I mean, Gold Collect has that too. I just don't find it as, as easy to read. Um, so Alan Thornton, Moon Knight 29 is next for my press. Yeah, man. Beautiful books. In fact, that collection I just bought has, I think, I think is a 29. So I'm quite happy. I don't think it's high grade, but it's in there. Hey doc. Hey everyone. Hey Prince Zodiac. How are you doing? 
Rock City. There was an actual pencil question mark on the cover of the book in a sun bleaching spot. Well, why would they do that, Rock City? I don't understand. You, you sure it wasn't there before you said it? Because that seems pretty. That seems terrible. Like, I mean, why would a pencil go anywhere near a comic book in a grader's on a grader's desk? And what you need to do, Rock City, is you need to take pictures, man. Take pictures of your books before you send them because. If you had a picture of that book without the pencil mark and then you sent it with the pencil mark, I think they wouldn't have told you to go pound salt if they if you had actual proof because that that seems um extremely ne- negligent if that's if that's what actually happened. That's not a good thing, right? So anyways, hopefully you get to the bottom of that because that's pretty crappy. Um let's go back to the Disney Plus uh thingamabob there and see what else is coming up the up the up coming up here. Uh, honestly, I'm not really excited about the animated I Am Groot, personally. Uh, what If was all right. Agatha, House of Harkness. Um, uh, let's go see her first appearance. Let's see what's going on with that. That's Fantastic Four. I'm not even sure what that is. Like, I got to check that really quick. Let me let me see what it is. Agatha. It's Fantastic Four 80-something, I think, if I remember correctly. Harkness. First appearance. Let's see here, guys. Uh, 94. I was sort of close. Uh, Fantastic Four, 94. So let's go to, back to, there it is. Let's go to Key Collector first and see what they say. All right, 94. Fantastic Four, 94. Let's see what's going on. Oh, this 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 is not a very um, even this is kind of irritating. Doesn't really give you. Come on now, did I spell that wrong? I think I did. That's my typing skills, guys, and I can't see my screen from where I'm sitting very well. There it is. Down to the bottom, 94, where are you? There it is. What the heck? Yeah, it's popped. 655, it's saying here. Oh, let's go to eBay. Is it click me over to eBay? So raw copies, 221, 195, 170. Let's see CGC. Let's see what we got in CGC. And let's see some solds. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what Agatha's bringing in. So, five hundred bucks for a for a for a very fine. It looks like seven point five five twenty four. So, I don't see any really high high grades here. Oh nine zero eleven hundred. Man, I, I, I think I've, I've got a copy of that book. I'm guaranteed I've got a copy or two of that book. I just It's a book. It was a throwaway book for so many years, right, guys? I don't know the grade, mind you, but I'm pretty sure I do have copies of it. Um, what do you guys think of this Agatha Harkness character? I, I was not a fan, to be quite honest. I was not a fan. And, and maybe, again, I hear I was complaining about uh, Oscar Isaacs. I'm not, I'm not a super fan of uh, Han or... What's her name? Han, the one who played Agatha. I'm not a big fan of hers either. I don't mind her. I don't. I don't know if we want to base a whole series around her, but they are. Um, so it should be interesting what they're going to do with it. But um, the book is, is 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 heating up. Like I mean, it's it's heating up and it's it's maintaining its heat. And again, Wayne, I guess with this one, we're looking at a book that's a, is a little bit older, so not as easy to find. Like I'm, I'm not seeing any high grades. The highest grade. Oh wow, what's that one? Oh here, no way. Oh, check this out, guys. I found a high grade one. Check this out. Right here. So a 9-8 white pager sold for while well, the actual price is not there. The price will, of this book will show up on GP, but it won't show up here. So it was a ten thousand dollar US book. Someone made an offer and got it. So you can assume it's probably around the nine thousand to ninety five hundred mark, I would think. For a first appearance of Agatha. And look at the drop, man, from a well, nine eight's the highest you're gonna get, but but wow. That's pretty, pretty crazy. Nine two right here, and it's fourteen hundred. Buy it now, U.S. So, 
Yeah, what'd you guys think of that? Do you, do you like the character? Are you looking forward to that show? I know someone earlier said they were look bring on the magic. They were kind of interested in that. But but what did you what do you think of, of that of that character? What do you think of them um actually focusing on that character more so? Excited about that or Uh, Alan Thorne, 29, hard to get high due to the black cover. It is very hard. You talk about the Moon Knight books. Yes, a lot of those Moon Knight books have the black covers and they're very hard uh, to get. Yeah, Rock City. Well, if you had before and afters, Rock City, I, send those to CGC. Who are you talking to over there? If you've got before and afters, show it to them and tell them, you guys wrecked my book and be really, you know, you know, be a little more aggressive there. I, I think you're going to have to be because... Uh, yeah, that's not good, man. That is not good. Um, just checking something out here, guys. There's a lot of stuff to flesh out with that character if she came from Salem. Yeah. Well, she did come from Salem. There's a, there's a lot to flesh out with her. Um, hey, Real Hyperion. How you doing? Welcome, buddy. Yeah, uh, again, I, I just, I thought she was kind of, I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't dig the corny stuff. And I found, I found WandaVision. I liked WandaVision. It had the corny element to it. Uh, and I just didn't, I didn't find her a very threatening villain. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, wait, I'll wait, I'm, I never want to say I hate something. Like I didn't, I've not hate, I never, I've not hated anything that the MCU has done. Not one thing. I've just I've, some things I've liked more than others, but I haven't walked away from something saying oh i absolutely hated that movie or that television series i just walk away saying eh, i'm kind of indifferent I, I i don't think i'd be any different having not i don't think i would have lost anything by not having watched it you know what i mean and that's where i'm coming from and and, and wandavision although i liked it i just found that particular character just kind of meh glad i nabbed that marvel spotlight 28th price for good for you buddy brad that's good because that's that's a that's a big value book as well. Rock City. I personally won't be watching unless the first couple episodes grab me. Yeah, you know, I feel almost obligated to watch, you know. And I, and I get what you're saying. Um, you want to you wanna like the stuff and you want to support the stuff. But if it doesn't grab you in the first little while, then I don't know. When I'm not excited that it's coming, when, when when I'm not excited to watch the show every week, then it's like, well, what's the you know? Like I was feel I was excited when they start. I'm always excited when the show starts. But then when I when I get when the show gets going, I say, well, I'm only wa why am I watching this? What am I getting out of this? Am I really enjoying it that much? I I gotta you know look forward to it each week. So I've not been. I just they're, they're it's good. They're all good, but they're not great. And uh, and to be honest, even some of the MCU, the, the last few MCU MCU films, have, I felt that way about too. I really enjoyed Shang Chi. Was it the best thing I ever saw? No. But you know what? I think Endgame and and. And everything the MCU has done in the last 12 years is, is going to be a hard act to follow. A hard act to follow. And I'm going to give them a chance to, you know, to figure things out and to figure out that direction, the new direction they're going in. Um, but it's going to be tough, I think, for them because they started out with characters that everyone, not everyone, but most people recognized. And now they're going off into, into the... Uh, the real B tier characters and C tier C, C tier characters that people don't know much of, especially the modern characters. But there, there's definitely going to be uh, a learning curve for audiences. But you know what? Look at Deadpool and look at Venom. Right? These are characters that that most people don't know. But when they saw the movies, they really, really gravitated towards them. Now that being said, Deadpool and Venom are were, are both hugely popular in the comic books. But then again, is isn't isn't Camilla Khan hugely popular in the comic books? You know, um, isn't uh, you know Ironheart popular in the comic books? We're gonna find out. We're gonna see if it translates well the film or not. She Hulk, I don't know. I, I the She Hulk, I, I'm like I said, I'm always I'm a huge She Hulk fan. I hope it goes well. Uh, I know that Blansky's back, the Abomination's back, Titania is the main villain who was I think created by Doctor Doom in the comic book. So. Who knows? It could be a, a connection there. I also heard that She-Hulk, I'm not going to say exactly where or when, but I heard She-Hulk might make an appearance before her series. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe they're they're going to give us something, um, something fun. Hopefully. 
I like to adhere, and this is Ro uh, Rock City says, I like to adhere to a three strikes I'm out for Marvel series. Haven't ever stopped at three. Um, so you've watched them all then in their entirety. Is what you're saying. So you just kept going. I, I just keep going. But you see, with me, it's different too. I have my family watching too. My kids really get into it. So we, we kind of have to watch them. But you know, then again, if they weren't watching, I'd still watch it too. It's like the Star Wars films. I, I hated what they were doing. I knew that last Star Wars movie was going to blow. I knew that last Star Wars movie was going to blow. And it blew hard. But I went and saw it. I had to. You know, well, I'm not going to go see it. Of course I'm going to go see it. And a lot of Star Wars fans did. And we all knew going in it was going to be a mess. And it certainly was a big mess. What a crappy show that was. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Um, let me see what else here. Which other ones can we look at? Um... I think the trick is, guys, with all these series, these series are definitely going to bring um, these characters to the forefront, right? We're going we're gonna to see... Where is it again? We're going to see all these characters that people don't know about. Like, uh, even some of the characters in the X-Men, right? That people aren't that familiar with, like Rogue. Um, even though she was in the movies, they didn't, spend, they didn't focus on that character at all. So characters like Rogue, and even, you know what? Storm, too. Really, let's be honest. The X Men movies, as they progressed, was was a Wolver was a focused on Wolverine. You know, Professor X, Wolverine, Magneto, and and Phoenix. Right? Uh, even Cyclops wasn't well developed. Most of the characters in the X Men in the X Men movies were not well developed. So, uh, the X Men characters in this in this cartoon, this Echo character, Agatha herself, Agatha Har Harkness, um, even She Hulk, Miss Marvel, Groot, well, Groot we know, but Ironheart. Um, a lot of these characters are going to be new to people, right? And and, and the trick is, and, and they're going to gain popularity over the as the as the years go by. They're gonna they're gonna have fan bases. Look, there's, look, we all know what the Star Wars prequels, and most of us know they stunk. But you know what? You talk to kids who saw the Star Wars prequel when they were seven, eight, nine years old, and that to them was was like me watching the original Star Wars. They love them. So, you know, even though those movies by by us old fart standards, the old OG Star Wars fan standards was no good, to a new audience seeing it for the first time and experiencing Star Wars for the first time loved that series. So these characters, all these shows that are going on here, these are just going to put these characters in the minds of all that watch them. New viewers, new to comics, new to the comic book lore, it's going to be new to them. And because it's new to them, uh, some are going to like them, some are not, but probably most are going to like it. And moving forward into the years to come, these characters are going to become as popular and as powerful, I guess, uh, I, as IPs as Spider-Man, uh, Captain America, whoever, right? These characters will become the norm for them. So, you know what? Is it a bad move to pick up some of these books? I don't think so, I, I, you know? But the trick is, because these are mostly modern books we're talking about, Miss Marvel, you know, uh, some of the X-Men books, some of the, you know, like Bishop and Rogue and those, these books are still attainable in raw condition, in very good, in raw, in a raw state, in very good condition, not a bad idea to pick them up. You know, um, I picked up, uh, what's her name's book today, Raw, um, Kate Bishop's uh, first solo series. I picked that up today from a guy in Quebec. I just bought one, 50 bucks near Mint. I picked it up. It's actually going to be probably what I give away on Rob's show, but uh, I want to buy some more, right? And I just put them away. You know, uh, I'm not talking about buying the entire series, guys. I'm talking about buying key issues and first appearances and maybe the odd variant copy a cover that's very rare. Nothing wrong with put, picking those up and putting them away because these characters are going to be sustainable. They're going to be around for a long, long time. Um, you know, just think about... You know, Spider-Man was cre created in 63, right? I was born in 71. By the time I was five years old, I knew who Spider-Man was. Uh, the cartoon was on, you know, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. That cartoon was on, you know, and uh, there was comic books that were, you know, my brother had comics that would come and go. And so I was aware of who Spider-Man was. And he's in my mind as a child growing up. And then the toys I bought, the same thing is going to happen here with these characters that are not as well known, right? They're not well known now, but they're gonna, you know, Miss Marvel, Camilla Khan will be well known in 10, 15 years, you know, to the general public. I'm not talking about you and me because we know who they are. But I'm talking about to people who don't know comic books, right? Um, look at Agatha Harkness, man. She, no one knew who the hell she was even a year ago. And she's been around for 30, 40 years. No one knew who she was, 
Oh, 50 years almost, actually. What am I talking about? Late 60s, I think she was? No, 70s. She was in the se- early 70s. Same age as me, probably. 1971. Um, let me see. I can tell you right now, actually. When, when did she come out? Uh, uh, where is it? What was the first appearance of Agatha Harkness? 1970. 51 years old, right? And it took 51 years, 50 years for that character to be featured in that in a television program. And now that she's featured in a television program, she's known. And now Disney's going to spend even more money and time featuring that character. Costumes at Halloween, her own new comic book series to promote the TV series, to coincide with the TV series. You know, so... Yeah, that character is going to be known now. It's just the way it is. It's going to be in the in the pop culture zeitgeist now. It's there forever. So, yeah, uh, you know, I think as comic book collectors looking at these things and perhaps comic book investors, and I'm not I'm not going to lie, guys. I think I'm a collector, but I think I'm also a, in some ways an investor too now, especially with some of the books that I own. Um, yeah, I think you know, looking at these books, you know, find the ones that are in really nice condition, grade them as high as you can, and then put them away. And then the ones that maybe don't come back 9, 8, 9, 6, or 9, you know, if they're 9, 6, 9, 4, blow them out. If they're 9, 8, and you still want to collect, keep them. Because I don't think these books are going to be, you know, go down in value too much. I I don't think so. I could be 100% wrong here. I'm just saying, I mean, um, and that's only if you can find them for a good price. I wouldn't recommend you go and buy a, a first appearance of Camilla Khan for you know what was it two thousand dollars right I don't I don't recommend doing that not when you can buy a raw copy for one hundred and fifty dollars even buy five raw copies at one hundred and fifty each and then grade them and maybe just one comes back a nine eight that's what I would do before going and spending the money on a on a on a book like that that's my opinion anyway like that first uh, or that first solo story Kate Bishop that I bought it's a gorgeous looking book. I'm not, I mean, it's on eBay, so I'll get it, but I'll get it this week. And when I see it, I'll know if it's going to be a nine, eight or not. But what I'm trying to say is uh, a nine, eight copy sells between two fifty and $300 right now. Canadian. I bought it for $49, right? So I'll grade that book for, you know, whatever. So basically when it's all said and done under a hundred dollars, I have the book and hopefully it comes back a nine, eight, right? So if I buy five more of those, it's a good chance one or two are going to come back a nine, eight. You know what I mean, and you sell the other ones off, and just keep the keep the uh, the, the high grade ones. What do you think? Let's let's have a look at what you're saying, guys. Um, went a bit of a tangent there. Sorry. Ah, <clears throat> uh, oh, interesting. Uh, where did I, um, the fact? Okay, Rock City. The fact that the actual Hulk made a cameo in the teaser trailer is a huge red flag for me. But the actress playing her is awesome, so I have hope. Well, Rock City, She-Hulk number one, Bruce Banner's in there. He, he gives her the, the, it's his blood that makes her the She-Hulk. So he kind of, I, I would hope he'd be in there, right? Now, if he's there for every single episode, that might be a red flag. But he should be there for the first and second episode, I would think. No? Um, Brad, so, uh, Sony has huge potential with Spider-Verse. I think Marvel's only hope is X-Men. Um, uh, who, cause I, I, your next point I read ahead, you said, Brad, I believe Avengers has run its course and you know what? You might be right. I was thinking that exact thing today. If there's no cap and there's no Iron Man, no Black Widow, who's, who, what are we doing? For the Avengers, you know what I mean? I think I think you're right. I think that maybe they have to go from IP to IP. Maybe maybe revisit the Avengers later. They're obviously doing the Young Avengers. That's something that's totally going to happen. Young Avengers is going to happen. If you haven't bought your Young Avengers number one yet, and I haven't, uh, could have had a nine eight for a thousand bucks. That I should have bought, and I didn't. Um, pick a couple of those babies up and put them away because they're they're gonna they're gonna crank as well. But I, I do agree. I think Avengers has run its course, and I think they are going to ve- veer off to the X Men and the FF. That's what they're going to do with this, I think. And they'll probably go tap, you know, go back and revisit the Avengers later, later. I think. Um, Rock City says I'd like an origin story for Mystique, but unless Jennifer Lawrence is on board, I... okay, Rock City, you're joking, right, man? Please tell me you're joking. I call oh, she was terrible. You're joking. You're joking. I think you're joking. Um... Uh, where we go here? Uh, well, not an origins, rather a filler story between Charles Xavier and Magneto. 
Yeah, maybe you do like her. I don't know. I, I thought she was just calling in that performance. She hated she hated playing Mystique. She's gone on record to say she hated it. Uh, and she got she she got the deal to play Mystique. She was excited originally, but then her her star took off after that that first X Men movies, right? And she didn't want to do it anymore. But she was contracted to do it, and she had no choice. But she did not want to do them anymore. She hated playing Mystique, and it, you could tell it was near the end. There it was terrible. Um, bring on the mutants! I agree. The Burns Claremont run is getting pricey. Yes, and is it the Burn run? The, again, going back to like I was saying, like Bill Sienkiewicz's uh, run on Moon Knight is spiking. Uh, I'm not saying they're all million dollars, but the, the books are start in high grade are very pricey. The John Byrne uh, X-Men books as well, getting pricey. And I wouldn't be a damn bit surprised. It's already starting a little bit. Those Alpha Flight John Byrne books, man. Those are those are awesome. That was an awesome run too. If you like the John Byrne X-Men, you'll, you're going you're gonna to like the John Byrne Alpha Flight. Uh, his play with character and 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 just the art itself was was awesome. I love the Alpha Flight books; they're great. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, and they've been undervalued for so long. A lot of them have been. Alan Thornton, which Echo, uh, with Echo, sorry, the ta- the tracksuit mafia in Hawkeye. We'll eventually get Kingpin, which is awesome. Hopefully, D- D'Onofrio reprises him. Yeah, there is a connection between Echo and the tracksuit mafia and the Kingpin. I think he employs the tracksuit mafia, right? And so, yeah, there is they they, they could drop that man. Who knows? I mean, D'Onofrio was awesome. I hope they do bring him back. He was the best rendition we've ever had of the Kingpin, um, and. You know, although I sometimes wonder, should the kingpin be bigger? You know, should he be bigger than D'Onofrio? D'Onofrio was good. I liked him. But I always envision the kingpin as being this massive guy that needs to be almost, maybe even needs to be CG and not an actual person. Because, anyways, I don't know. He's supposed to be superhuman strong, right? But, um, because I can't see, I wouldn't see D'Onofrio's character fighting Spider-Man. He'd get his ass kicked. Right, but um, yeah, I hope so. I, I'll be, I'd have no problem if D'Onofrio comes back as King because I did like him a lot. Brad, I want Alpha Flight movie with an April Wine soundtrack. <laughs> Would that be awesome? Or an all Canadian soundtrack? Just no hip. I'm not a big fan of the tragically hip. I don't know about you guys, but I just never got into the hip. Rock City Comics. I can see that, Paul. Even the '70s people didn't want their heroes having flaws. Uh, there was a retracted message because I don't think I know what's going on there. Um, Rock City. Until the antihero came about with the rising popularity of Punisher and others like him. Okay, I'm not sure what we're talking about, but uh, yeah, the Punisher. Um, Wolver- oh, maybe you're talking about Wolverine, obviously. Alan Thornton. To all the people in the chat, if you haven't yet, don't forget to thumbs up this video to help Kev with Google. Is that how it works? Alan, thank you. If that's true, if, if that does help, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, Young Avengers is certainly going to happen. Rock City Comics. Alan, I was the first one hit the thumbs up. Sally, I have but one thumbs up to give. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Alan Thornton, that was for Rock City's stupid cat. Okay. Um, Rock City. Um, okay. Don't understand the reference, but thanks anyways. And you're doing But it's okay. Someone should buy my Alpha Flight run then. And I think, Wayne, hey, guys, you know what? Actually, Wayne, I'm going to plug you right now because I'm going to tell you. If you guys are looking for some nice books, uh, Wayne over on Facebook has a lot of really nice runs for sale. Um, Wayne, how can they find you? The Wayne's in Pickering, Ontario, Canada, but I'm sure he'll he'll mail them anywhere. But um, but Wayne does have some nice older uh, books and some great runs, and the prices are not bad. A couple of times, Wayne, I thought about giving you a call myself, but I've been buying way too much lately. So look up Wayne Def. Guys, if you're looking for some cool comics, look up Wayne Def on Facebook and go to, if you got Marketplace, uh, he's on there. Perhaps you guys could hook up and he can show you what he's got for sale. Wayne's got a lot of good, good run books for sale. And his prices are good. The books themselves are well, well priced. I, I can, I can attest to that. Uh, I agree with you on Kingpin. It's huge. He's huge. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it's like when we saw... It's like when we saw uh, Juggernaut in, I don't know, X-Men 2, I think it was. That Australian guy played him, you know, and he was like, Rrr. and he was like a guy. It was like a regular dude. I'm like, no. But then when we got, when we got uh, Juggernaut in Deadpool 2, 
I'm going to rip you in half now. <laughs> he rips Deadpool in half. His terror- <laughs> that's, no, that's Juggernaut. That's exactly, and then him and Colossus fighting, that was freaking amazing. That's exactly what King, or that's exactly what Juggernaut was supposed to be. And I even see Kingpin being, maybe not quite as tall, but that imposing, you know. And while D'Onofrio, you know, depicts him well, acting wise, um, I would think I'd prefer to see a much, um, and, and he's a, and D'Onofrio depicts him also as a little bit of a madman, kind of, kind of, kind of unhinged and crazy. Uh, and not so much business-like. So I don't know. I think maybe I'd be okay with a new a new version of Kingpin. Uh, but again, I'd be okay with D'Onofrio too. I'd be okay with that dude who, play, who played Luke Cage. I forget the actor's name. He was great. And even What's-His-Face as is, is Daredevil. He was great too. Um, yeah. Uh, I agree. Okay. Miller finally did Daredevil right. Miller's Frank Miller's Daredevil was sick. Paul, I agree with you. And Paul, it's crazy. You texted me and told me that your books arrived today. Today? Saturday, right? Yeah. And they disappeared off my FedEx tracking sheet. And they were supposed to arrive on Monday. So they got to you really quick. I don't know how that happened, but I'm glad they arrived safe and sound. Wayne, everyone wants a 9.8, so what we do, we do. I price my comics right off for the grade. I have 416 Conan comics for 550, no takers, all near mint. Oh, well. Yeah, guys, go again, go check out Wayne's books on Facebook. Uh, I'm shocked you have a lot of books left over there. I heard it's kind of slow right now selling comics, though. A lot of guys I, I know that sell comics on Facebook, and uh, it's kind of slowing down a little bit. So who knows? Maybe the... Maybe the uh, the bubble has burst. Maybe, the, you know, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Paul, I'm the 70s kid who bought all that stuff. Yeah, I was a little too young to be buying comics in the 70s. All I wanted in the 1970s was Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. That's all I wanted. Not the comic books, the toys. Uh... I moved to comics in the 80s, but I bought a lot of 1970s books. Uh, yes, uh, FM Daredevil, Frank Miller Daredevil run was awesome. It, it was. It put it put Daredevil on the map. That's for sure. As a serious as a serious character, the Born Again was the best run in my opinion. That was a good run. Hey, Kev Wayne says, if I need to grab my two books waiting on Forestal, can I grab them? Of course you can, Wayne. Uh, back in the shop on Saturday, but all I need you to do is let me know you want to come, so I'll bring them. So you want to contact me on the Friday night before, you know, and then I'll, I'll, I'll dig them out and bring them with me. Um, that's how I usually do it. But yeah, you're more than welcome to. Brad, I'm an 80s kid. Anything Wolverine I want. Isn't that funny? We all have our own, our own, our own things, right? There were certain things we all searched for and wanted as kids. And I mean, uh, comic books, like I said, was 85 was when I got into comics. Prior to that, I was a Star Wars nut looking for Star Wars toys everywhere I could. And I was also into the superhero toys a little bit as well, He-Man toys. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I gravitated towards. But it, I think what it was for me with comics was again my buddy Adam taking me to the comic store. But it was the artwork, and then and then I really I really delved deep into the art world um, after that, and I really started honing my skills as an artist. I ended up going to school for art too, visual arts, uh, you know. But I never could do comic books very well, you know. That that is a real skill, man. I don't know if you guys know him or not. I went to school, I went to high school with a guy named Ramon Perez. Ramon is a uh, is a well known comic book artist now, right? He works for has had stints with Marvel and Di- uh, Disney. I think with Disney actually too. He's done work with Disney Animation, but with Marvel and with uh, with DC, I believe, and his own his own company as well. But he's made a real name for himself in the in the, in the uh, in the uh, comic book world, but I went. To, he was two years younger than me. Ramon was two years younger than me, and that dude in grade nine, when I was in grade eleven, and he was in grade nine, he was producing work that was like, "What the hell? How does this guy do it?" He was just made for it, right? And I myself, I struggled. Like I couldn't, I could create, but it would take me three days. It would take him an hour to do. Like that's how good this dude was, right? And I haven't met anybody else until recently. 
one of my my own students now, uh, my high school, uh, who went, who's who's trying to get into comic book art. He's a young man. He's only about 20, 22 probably now, and his name's Michael Lupo. And this guy has his guy is good. Like he's got it too. He's got the same. He had the same uh, talent. He's not, not a similar artist. Him and Ramon's styles are very different, but he can produce the work amazingly. You know, he has the comic book art talent. There's a definite skill to it and a certain talent that's there. And he has it too. So I hope that he makes it. It took Ramon many years to get there. I don't think Ramon uh, made it big until he was in his, uh, probably in late 30s, early 40s. Or late 30s, I think. He did that. He did the Jim Henson book, Tale of Sand. And that put him on the map. He won the Eisner Award for that. Little kid from Oshawa, Ontario. Won the Eisner Award, San Diego. Anyways, after that, his career was kind of set. Well, Michael is, you know, more than half Ramon's age, and he's he's going at he's going for it, and hopefully he keeps going because he's fantastic. His kids' work is amazing. Boy, look, that's what's going on over here. Uh, Gemini mailers, all the best, Brad. I'll check him out. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Brad. I think you'll like that. Wayne, everyone wants nine eights. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh, what Wayne's trying to say is he's selling books. Everybody wants a nine eight. If it's not a nine eight, they don't want to buy it. But that's that's not realistic. You know, especially on books from the 70s and 80s. Um, sometimes you, you, you want to be happy with, excuse me, with books that are just near mint. You know, books that are 9294. As long as he's pricing them properly, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, Kevin and I would have been best friends back in the day, but his school was about five minutes further than mine. All Star Wars, all the time. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Wayne, Wayne went to school around the corner from me. I was at a Catholic school. Uh, called St. Thomas, and he was at a place called College Hill. I'm not joking, like a five-minute walk from my school. So we probably were at the same, we were probably in grade school at the exact same time. Right, 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 right Wayne? I think we were. Brad, uh, uh, oh, Dragon Fist, 101. I want to see Marvel do some Western. Funny you should say that. Lots of older good Marvel Western books. Been a while since a good Western movie had been released in theater. You know what, Dragon Fist 101? I had that exact conversation last night with... With Blade Man Steve. Blade Man is the guy who's going to be at, at the at my um, at our claim sale next week, and he has a lot of old. He's got a huge. Um, oh, it'll come to me in a second. Hold on. What's the what's the DC Western character with that thing? Jonah Hex. He's got a huge Jonah high grade Jonah Hex collection, and uh, and I said, you know what'll happen? I said Marvel will eventually get to their Western catalog. You know the Ringo Kid and all those westerns that you're talking about, Dragon Fist. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they if they try out the western. Why would they not? Even the old Ghost Rider, I you know delve into the old Western style Ghost Rider, which I think would be amazing. And uh, I told him, I said once Marvel does that then DC will jump back on the Jonah Hex bandwagon and try that all over again. Rick and Morty to Ramon. That's right, he did Rick and Morty, I believe. I believe. Um, I think he created his own characters that, that are similar to Rick and Morty. Not Rick and Morty, but it's something he's created on his own. Wayne, I went to school with Joey Jeremiah Degrassi. Still buddies. That's funny, Wayne, because he was at my house once. That's another story. Prince Zodiac, sequential art is extremely complicated to do well. You're damn right, Prince Zodiac. And you know what? It's oftentimes um, it's oftentimes not looked at looked at very seriously. And that used to piss me off too. When I was in my doing art class and I would do a sketchbook full of comic book art, my teacher or my art teacher would get mad at me and say, you know, this is not real art. You know, you gotta do you gotta paint from life and and what whatever. But I was always very angry about that because to me, um, it wasn't easy to do. It was very, very hard to do. And they would never give comic book art the credit it deserved, right? And uh, it's incredibly difficult to do well. You know, look at Rob Liefeld. He can't even do it well. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, Rob Liefeld. But, um, you know, but you're right. Sequential art is not easy. It's a, it takes a real skill to do it. And now, and now, you know, I think now the artists uh, are being paid... Uh, I wouldn't say celebrity wages, but they're being paid a much better wage than they did back in the sixties and seventies, right? And and if a and, and if a, if an artist like Ramon or, or whoever or like a you know Todd McFarlane, for example, creates his own characters, they know how to protect themselves and to and to uh, 
protect that IP to make sure that they own it and they have control over it, not like what happened over at Marvel and at DC where these these artists or these writers would create these characters and the company would own them. And then, then you know, nowadays, by today's standards, those, those, those families of those artists and creators are not are getting pittance compared to what Marvel and Disney are making or what DC and Warner Brothers is making, right? So... You know, a lot, a lot, we're a lot smarter now. The Rawhide Kid, man, that's right. And Ringo Kid, that's right. Alan Thorne, do you find that CGC is more forgiving on older books than grainy? Yeah, they, they tend to be. They tend to be. Modern books, man, there's a lot of them out there. And they see a lot of them too, right? I think they just, they're really harsh. They're really harsh on those modern books. You know, a while back I would get, like, you know, I'd, I'd see a lot more 9.8 uh, ASM 300s. I'm not seeing very many 9.8 300s anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every single one I do is a 9.8, Okay. Uh, but I, I see, you know, I've seen about three or four in the last six months that should have been, that, that are nine, eight contenders and all but one, uh, came back nine, six and one came back in nine, eight, the rest all came back nine, six. So are they harder on? I think they are. And I think it's because they see a lot more of them too. And I don't think they want to flood the market with nine, eights. I don't think they do. I, I could be wrong, but they are, they are easier. I think they they have a different standard when it comes to books from the forties, thirties, fifties, you know, than they do from today's books. Uh, David Fitch, other Ontario kid. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Alan Thornton. No, I already said that one. Raha kid got that there. There was Jonah Hex movie with Thanos. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Alan Thornton, LOL, I feel. Yeah, uh, Jonah Hex movie was terrible, man. And 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 uh, and my buddy was pissed off because he has a high grade run and several caught first appearances of Jonah Hex. And he said that after that movie came out, it totally uh, it ruined his... Um, the value of that collection it went right down. It went right downhill. So the value just fell out after that movie bombed. But listen, guys, I'm going to take off. Uh, I was at the Leaf game last night with my son. It was a lot of fun. Me and Jack went and saw the Leafs play Calgary last night. What a great game. They came back and won overtime. It was Jack's first time seeing an overtime uh, game. We've been to, we go to Leaf games probably once once a year. Uh, but this is the first overtime, so he loved that. And we, uh, But didn't get a great sleep in that hotel room. I never sleep well in hotels, so... Um, anyways, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to head out here and, uh, chill out for a bit. I was going to do some pressing. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to go chill out with the wife for a while and make it a full day of pressing tomorrow. I've got a lot of books to do tomorrow. Again, if you're, if you're just dropping by right now, again, guys, congratulations to all those people who won a prize in, in my 1000 subscriber draw. You can go check that video right now. Maybe you are a winner and weren't, a, weren't even aware of that. I found out from two winners. They gave me the notice today. They just found out. So uh, maybe you're a winner. Go check out in my 1,000 subscriber draw. The new prize can be checked out in the information section below. It's a $250 Canadian gift card towards a CGC submission. And that roughly covers 10 modern uh, comic books being graded. Okay, that's when I hit 1,500 subscribers. And I might add something in on there. I don't know. And I got to think big for the 2,000 subscriber. God knows when that'll be. But I got to think big for that one. Um, also, this week, guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit the notification bell. Going to have a lot of videos this week. Not that I plan it that way, but I've got a What's in the Press coming up probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. I have two CGC unboxings and of course I bought another collection. This one's on a very big collection so I could probably go through most of it in one sitting and I'll do that who knows some point this week. Guys thanks so much for popping by. I'll check the, the chat out one more time and then I'll, I'll take off later skater. Yeah Wayne take it easy buddy. Go press the <laughs> Brad sh that's not appropriate but not a bad idea brother. Uh, fun chat as always. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. You know what, guys? Also, yes, Disney put out a lot of, uh, Disney discussed a lot of, um, a lot of series that are coming out over the next year and two. You know, I think my advice to you would be this. Try to find, if, if you want to, you don't have to buy any of the damn things if you don't want to, but if you want to add these to your collection, I would stay away from the graded books I would find high grade near mint uh, copies uh, and pick pick a few copies. Instead of buying one big book at a thousand bucks, go buy a few copies at a hundred or 150 a pop or even less, who knows, depending on the book and then have them worked on by your presser and graded and perhaps you'll, you'll get a nine eight that way. You'll save a lot of money. You'll be a lot happier you did it that way too. And um, that's what I would suggest you do. Um, and if you haven't delved into the world of Camilla Khan or Riri Williams or, uh, you know, um, even the She-Hulk or Moon Knight, 
do yourself a favor. There's some good stories there. So go and check those out. And you know what? Maybe there's some characters that are going to appeal to you within those pages that you might want to go and find their first appearances of too and stash those away in your collection or your investment portfolio, whatever you want to say. I feel bad saying investment portfolio, you know, because I never looked at comics as an, as an investment before, but it's, it, it's, it's kind of the way it's gone. Anyways, guys, I'm going to shut up now and take off. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll probably see you on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Until then, have a great night. Take care. Bye for now.